Surfshark sponsors this video, so a massive thank you to them. Look, when we say the ultimate Enterprise, you're likely thinking of your favourite version of the legendary Starship, right? Well, no. We're not talking about the A, B, C, or D. Well, we're talking about a version of the USS Enterprise D that was a very powerful ship. The Galaxy-class Starship was an iconic symbol of Starfleet in the 24th century, even into the 25th century. But what if we upgraded it, and made the Exploration Starship into a dreadnought that could take on multiple enemy starships at once? Well, an alt timeline in Star Trek did this. Yes, we're talking about the Galaxy X Dreadnought class. Let's explore more. But before we warp into this video, if you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, then make sure you hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Track Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. As always, please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, because if you're talking about Star Trek, then we want to hear about it. Okay, engage! So what is Surfshark? Well, Surfshark is a virtual private network, or VPN for short. It keeps you safe and private by covering up everything you do online. When you connect to the internet, all that information is encrypted, and therefore anyone trying to snoop on you won't be able to see what you're doing or where you're doing it all from. Using Surfshark, you can put your device anywhere in the world. Not physically, of course. That means you can access usually unavailable content and connect to popular websites. Sometimes these sites are locked if you're in a specific country, but using Surfshark, you can get around this and, for example, unblock streaming platforms and get different content libraries worldwide. Getting past geo-blocking is a fantastic feature of Surfshark. And what if there's an awesome new trailer you want to watch, but you're not in the right country? Well, simply use the Surfshark VPN to bypass that website and say goodbye to missing out. Surfshark even helps you stay safe online. In the age of increasing online security, you need to protect your connection on public Wi-Fi. Surfshark will keep you safe on public Wi-Fi networks, typically found in cafes or out and about, by encrypting your online data. Security features also aid you in sending and receiving files securely. Click the link in the video description or head over to surfshark.deals/trekcentral and enter the promo code TREKCENTRAL for 83% off and 3 extra months for free. So, what are we talking about? Well, this is the Galaxy X-class starship which existed in an alternate timeline in the Star Trek universe. However, it also exists in Star Trek Online, the MMO video game. Trek Central's Captain Jack commands one of these ships in his personal STO fleet, and today we'll explore what makes this starship unique and how it fits into the Star Trek universe. Designed and launched from the Utopia Planitia fleet yards, the Galaxy Dreadnought was originally built off of the frame for the iconic Galaxy-class starship and was active during the 2390s. It came in at around a length of 641 meters with 42 decks. Warp propulsion still worked as standard, however, the Galaxy Dreadnought will be able to go to a sustained warp speed at a factor of 13, higher than the original class of Starship, which could only maintain a warp of 9.6 for a few hours. It's unknown if this was the Starship's top cruise speed, but as it can go to warp 13 sustainably, it could probably push higher warp factors. Speaking of faster than light propulsion, the Galaxy Dreadnought could be capable of being equipped with a quantum slipstream drive in the 25th century. This unique technology, while still being experimental, allowed for faster propulsion. However, as of the original design, slipstream can only be maintained for a short time before needing to stop and cool down. However, in the alt timeline of all good things, due to the war with the Klingons, it's unknown whether Starfleet has developed quantum slipstream technology. The inclusion of the iconic third nacelle would be useful for creating increased power lines as well as a more stabilized warp field. The nacelles had additional structures on top of them, as well as the pylons having fins on the outer curves. While an upgrade and redesign of the original Galaxy-class starship, the Dreadnought version still retained some iconic features, such as the saucer separation, which would aid evacuations and unique attack tactics, while the original Galaxy class would only use the saucer separation in dire situations, such as an evacuation, the Dreadnought would use it better during combat. The ship would support phaser banks and photon torpedoes, including aft torpedo launchers, and each launch tube was capable of firing at least five photon torpedoes simultaneously. 
The original Galaxy class typically carried around 250 photon torpedoes. However, we can imagine the Galaxy Dreadnought likely carried more, and most likely used quantum torpedoes, which were more common by the turn of the 25th century. An additional weapons array was fitted to the dorsal hull of the ship, right next to the bridge section. These cannons acted as phaser weapons to complement the other array of weaponry that the ship carried. One of the biggest features of the Dreadnought Galaxy class was the mounted phaser on the underside of the saucer section, known as a Spinal Phaser Lance, and it's a devastating weapon. Given that it is built into the structure, specifically the spine of the starship's hull, this weapon is attached fully and cannot be removed. It can fire a massive single phaser beam that is capable of penetrating even a Klingon attack ship. A cloaking device was typically installed on the Galaxy Dreadnought. Originally, the Federation were not allowed to use cloaking devices on starships, except for the USS Defiant in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. However, by the time the Galaxy Dreadnought would come around, the Treaty of Algaron was dissolved due to the Romulan Star Empire being absorbed into the Klingon Empire. Therefore, the Federation can create and install their cloaking device on their starships, such as the Galaxy-class Dreadnought. Due to the versatility of the cloaking device designed by Starfleet, it could also be installed on other starships. Defense-wise, the ship could be equipped with their standard Starfleet shield systems, which would be appropriate for the 25th century. Such shields could include regenerative shielding. Some starships would feature the ability to produce an antimatter spread, therefore ejecting antimatter in a pyrotechnical display around the friendly starship, confusing and disrupting enemy scanners. Additionally, the spread would disable any tractor beam that was locked on, allowing the friendly ship to retreat if needs be. Cannon-wise, the only time the dreadnought USS Enterprise-D has appeared on screen is during Star Trek The Next Generation series finale, All Good Things. During a temporal event known as the Anti-Time Disruption, a future was shown that included the crew of the Enterprise-D, all leading different lives. The ship was not destroyed on Viridian 3, much like the actual Enterprise-D had been, or rather, would be. The Enterprise-D continued to serve as the flagship of the United Federation of Planets. However, the ship was scheduled to be decommissioned five years before Picard saw this anti-time future. William T. Riker, now promoted to Admiral, would save his old ship and make it his flagship. The ship would be fully refitted with a third warp nacelle, and additionally, new updated technology would be installed on the now aging starship. A powerful phaser emitter was installed on the dorsal hull, and a cloaking device was installed. Following Jean-Luc Picard joining the USS Pasteur to investigate the anti-time anomaly, Admiral Riker realized that Picard would not listen. They took the Enterprise to intercept the underpowered medical starship. Arriving just in time, the Enterprise intercepted two Klingon battleships and successfully destroyed one of the attacking ships with the Enterprise's new phaser lance. And seeing their defeat, the other Klingon vessel retreated. The Enterprise then beamed the crew of the USS Pasture due to an impending warp core breach. And just as the crew were beamed aboard, including Captain Beverly Picard, the Pasture was destroyed. Admiral Riker was insistent on returning to Federation space, however, Picard would convince him to travel to the Devron system and investigate the anomaly. The Enterprise-D would arrive in the system and watch the initial formation of the anomaly. However, it would be the last starship to be destroyed once the anomaly was sealed, therefore preventing any of these ships from coming into existence. Due to these events occurring in an alternate future, the Galaxy-class Dreadnought does not currently exist in the Star Trek universe. However, Jean-Luc Picard is the only person to remember the events of the anti-time eruption, therefore he would know the future version of the USS Enterprise-D. Now, we've never seen any advances to the Galaxy class that were compared to the Dreadnought version. We can presume he either did not remember, or chose not to mention it, without risking the timeline changing. And let's not forget that the future where this ultimate Enterprise existed was not the best future for Picard or the Galaxy as a whole. Now, the Galaxy-class Dreadnought appears in Star Trek Online, the video game. The game takes place in the 25th century in its storyline, and therefore it has nothing to do with the Star Trek canon. Yes, it bases its story on it, but currently it's doing its own thing compared to the lines of Star Trek Picard, which is also now set in the 25th century. In 2399, at the turn of the 25th century, the Galaxy-class Exploration Cruiser was refitted after the collapse of the Kitima Accords. In response to the increased hostility with the Klingon Empire, 
the newly refitted and redesigned Galaxy-class Dreadnought would carry a cloaking device and the devastating Spinal Lance weapon. They could also install cloaking devices due to the collapse of the Romulan Star Empire due to the Hoba Supernova, the destroyed Romulus. Several versions of the Galaxy-class Dreadnought were also developed, including the Venture-class, the Monarch-class, and the Yamato-class, all with unique designs and taking lessons from the previous Galaxy-class legacy. Star Trek Online would also name the Galaxy-class Dreadnought the Devron-class and the Galaxy X-class. However, this was only mentioned in the background materials. As such, these names are not canon on the TV show or Star Trek Online itself, and if you want to fly this ship, you can still do so in-game. Star Trek Online's acknowledgement of the Battle of Viridian III means the Enterprise-D was officially destroyed, and therefore the Enterprise-E succeeded her. Therefore, the actual Enterprise-D Dreadnought Galaxy Class does not exist in the game. The Enterprise namesake is given to the Odyssey Class Dreadnought, the USS Enterprise F. Originally, the Galaxy Class Starship was designed by Andrew Probert, while Herman Zimmerman supervised the interiors. Several key Star Trek creative people would have a hand in developing the Galaxy Dreadnought. However, we'll learn later that Andrew Probert was not his biggest fan. The Galaxy Class Dreadnought was first introduced in Star Trek The Next Generation's finale, All Good Things. The ship was created due to the final episode showing the future of the Star Trek universe. Jumping 25 years-ish in time means the creatives needed to show the starships evolving. During the design and planning of the final episode, visual effects supervisor Dan Curry suggested that the team modify the existing model of the USS Enterprise. Doing so by adding a third nacelle, Curry thought it should be obvious that the ship looked different and like it had been souped up to show the passing of time. Once Rick Berman and Peter Lauritsen signed off on the design, Curry handed the concepts over to his colleague, Greg Jean. Curry tasked Jean with making some additional modifications to the Enterprise D model at the time. The idea was to give the future Enterprise heavy weaponry. The first stop was to put a rather large cannon on the bottom of the starship, and this would become the Spinal Laser Lancer. As we mentioned earlier, the original designer of the Galaxy-class Enterprise D, Andrew Probert, was not exactly the biggest fan of the Galaxy Dreadnought version of his ship. He said he didn't like it during interviews about the refit version of the Starship. One of the big irks of the ship design was the inclusion of the third nacelle. This being, as typically in Star Trek, under Gene Roddenberry, starships are only supposed to have two nacelles to allow for warp travel. Therefore, some would argue that the inclusion of the third nacelle goes against what the original creator had envisioned. Also, Robert didn't like the idea of sticking random fins on the ship. When seeing the Galaxy Dreadnought on screen for the first time, Andrew Probert's reaction was, and we quote, What the f*** is that? It kind of says it all when it comes to his opinions on the starship, when you think about it and put it like that. What do you think of the Ultimate Starship Enterprise? Would you like to see this design once again sometime in the future? I mean, think about it. If Starfleet can make the Dauntless class, surely this Super Galaxy class could still work well. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, then make sure you hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. For now, I've been Zephyr's Voice. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Live long and prosper, my friend.